So this is going to be part one of two video of what to look for when you're thinking about buying a side-by-side -side shotgun or an over and under shotgun, a double barrel shotgun. Uh, the first thing, and this is what this video is covered, it's not an exhaustive list, I'm going to try to go over most of it, this is mostly for what I do, um, wood. The wood's going to be your first sign whether you're going to look further or walk away. It's my grandfather's old uh, Fox Model B. Um, it has been retired, um, but it still it still works. Um, first thing you're going to look for is right here, and this is where most of your indication is going to be for whether you want to buy it or not. It's in the wrist. So that's from the receiver back to about here. And what you're going to look for, and the first thing you're going to look for, is this in focus? Is it black? So this is walnut. This is so I can cross like this. This hasn't gone. This isn't there. But if this turns real dark, especially right here, actually right in here, that's sign of oil soaking into it. And what that's usually a sign of is somebody's cleaned the barrels out, cleaned the gun up after she hunting whatever, and then she stored up. She stored always like something like akin to this and the reason I specify that is because most people use oil like a rem oil or CLP something hops nine something like that when you store it up it's running down gravity's a bitch so she's gonna come down through the firing pin holes down through inside of here on the underside through all these grooves whichever openings it has a chance to run it's gonna run it's going to come down through the action and into the wood. The first point being the wrist. Right? First point contact is going to be in here. Or, sorry, in here. So if she's black, uh, oil soap, which is rot, and that's just a sign that this is all going to start breaking apart. It's not going to last. And that's the first sign. The second sign is if she's split here. Coming along the back, or on the underside here, it's usually top first, bottom second. That's a sign that the bedding's failed because the entire metal is trying to act as a wedge, pushing itself back, and the wood's just giving out. It's This is a wedge, and she's just going to start coming apart. That's why she's cracked back here. The bedding's failed. This all has to come apart. All the crap, soak, anything that's in there has to be scraped out, re all filled in with acre glass, and shaped, filed. It's a full it's a full afternoon to a two day job depending on how the stock's set up. So tang split, oil soak, avoid. You'll sometimes see cracks like this one down right here on the lower part of the tang, sometimes on the upper. Um, they're not as critical. It's a sign that the bedding is starting to go or that the wood's weak because if you get a multi-finger stock, something like it's on this Wesley Richards where you'd have a very thin piece of wood up here another one on the bottom and then they come out to the main wrist um, these will usually just start blowing off or whatever and that's age wear rot bedding so you would have something like that going on not it's a sign of something to start it can be stopped as long as the wood is not soaked in oil so those are the first things to look for something less critical you'll see is if the um, the toe is blown off, you see especially on surplus rifles where they got a screw coming in right here for the uh, pad, plate, whatever it might have. Somebody might over crank it, that causes this to just, it's a wedge, so pop. Somebody might have dropped it on an angle, which caused excessive pressure, force, friction in that pop. Not critical, can be fixed if you want to get a piece of walnut, similar grain, all that. Put her on, screw, you know, glue and screw and all that other stuff. Or just sand it off, flush, and then work the butt pad or plate into it as well. But the main thing to look for is here in the wrist, oil soak, cracking, or tang cracks, oil soak, avoid it, just avoid it. Just Unless you're looking for a serious project, two things to avoid. The next is up in the forestock. It's not really a critical, as critical. Um, if you get a shotgun forestock that's got two screws, in here this one doesn't say there's two screws right in here what happens is when you're assembling it let me do that real quick 
when you put her on, see, I'm out of frame again, or out of focus. When you put her on and take her off, your this is your bearing point. This is where all the friction is. So now when you pull her off, that's the first thing that's twisting. So if you get two screws down in here, they, they'll often be stripped out. Um, and at that point, you just got to fill them up with uh, glue, epoxy, whatever, re-drill them, screw your threads back in. Just an annoyance feature. And they all have this up here for the upper assembly. But that's that's the main thing. If you see this piece, and it's a, it's a different color than the main stock, either it's been replaced, it's been sanded on, or it's just how it was. If it's a cheaper gun, they didn't really care. Um, it's not that critical. Um, it doesn't mean that it's a replacement. But half the time it is. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it could just be a lower grade gun and they got mixed up or somebody stripped the varnish off. And that's what's left. Uh, Marlins, for instance, the Marlin 336s have a, uh, I've done my experience, or yeah, I've done a lot of stock refinishing on them over the years. Um, varnish flaking looks like hell and just clean that off. And sometimes you get them, they're two different, completely two different colors of wood. You might have a beech and a standard walnut. Uh, you might have a dark walnut and a light walnut. It's just the varnish they put on them kind of masqueraded it all. The budget 30s, the 30 ASs, I've had three quarters of them have beautiful dark walnut underneath that yellowish varnish. So easy way to check with any of that is to take the butt plate off and just see what the color is before going about it because beechwoods don't really like the stains or at least they're not easy to stain ramblings so those are the main things to look for with a wood stock um, over and unders is the same principle it's just the barrels are oriented differently um, so oil soak bedding failures with the upper and lower tang cracks starting of a failure or soak or excessive recoil I should mention that as well can cause these sides to crack up so if you say shot steel shot and a gun that's not rated for steel shot Besides the chance, the, uh, the fact that it might jump the extractor or cause a bulge if it's a choke barrel or something, excessive wear can cause this to crack as well. You'll know it when it happens because <laughs> you'll know. So, yeah, so that's the main things to look for when, for the wood on a um, double barrel shotgun before buying one. This also applies to single shots. The, um, with the um, oil soak or anything like that, or anything that uses this Tank Savage 99s, etc, etc. Oil soak, cracking, it's failed. Um, yeah, I can't uh, emphasize that enough because I see enough people that are like, oh geez, he wants $100 for this uh, old shotgun here, I might think of buying it. It's just like, mm, you might want to take a look at it. And that's kind of who I'm making this video for, somebody who's just like, Oh geez, that seems like a deal, or I'm thinking about buying one and what to look for. And these are just some general tips and tricks and stuff that I consider when or before buying one. And if she's really soaked and this is really dark, and then if she's normal wood, you can see that from a mile away. So the next video is going to be on the metal, in particular the barrels. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.